and gentlemen, welcome to the Library of Congress. My name is Sarah Duke, and I am the cur one of the curators of popular and applied graphic art in the uh, Prints and Photographs Division. This is the second in a series of con conversations sponsored by the Small Press Expo in conjunction with the exhibition now on view in the Graphic Arts Gallery, the Comic Art, 120 Years of Panels and Pages. Our current selection is on view from March 14th. And by Friday, March 20th, you'll be able to see a completely new selection of cartoon art from the collections of the Serial and Government Publications and the Prints and Photographs Divisions filling the gallery. This year, the library is celebrating change makers, and today's presenters both fit that bill. Keith Knight is a cartoonist, rapper, social activist, father, and educator. And then you'll learn something new about him today as well. As one of the cartoonists with Attitude, he created three cartoon series for alternative and then mainstream newspapers, The Nightlife, Think, and The K Chronicles. He wrote of his intention in creating The K Chronicles. Black characters tend to be so one-dimensional in the mainstream media, I was putting a character out there that me and the guys I grew up with could relate to. He has won several awards for his work, including a 2015 NAACP History Maker. He has been publishing compilations of his work for more than two decades with titles that include Fear of a Black Marker, Too Small to Fail, and They Shoot Black People, Don't They? Today, Keith is being interviewed by Small Press Expo Ex Executive Director Warren Bernhardt. Bernhardt himself, the author of books on cartooning, including Cartoons for, for Victory, has been a moving force in a partnership between the Small Press Expo and the Library of Congress. In 2011, SBX began sponsoring the appearance of cartoonists, first in the Graphic Novel Pavilion, and now throughout the festival, the National Book Festival. SBX and the Library also formed a partnership in 2011 to bring mini comics and original art from small press expo attendees into the collections, making them accessible to researchers for generations to come. Finally, SBX is sponsoring a series of presentations in conjunction with Comic Art 120 Years of Panels and Pages. If you have not, not already seen the exhibition, then I encourage you to stop down in the Graphic Art Gallery on the ground floor before you exit the library today. We invite you back to the library at 6 p.m. on Thursday, April 16th for the third lecture in the series, which features underground artist and author Trina Robbins. Without further ado, please help me welcome Keith Knight and Warren Bernard. It's an honor to thank the Library of Congress for having us, uh, having myself and Keith come up here and pontificate. Um, real brief, I, I have a few other words I want to say, a little different than what Sarah said. Um, for a blurb on a second book, Fear of Black, Black Magic Mark, of Gary Trudeau of Doomsbury fame allegedly said, Keith Knight is mapping out a previously unknown vector of the vast cartoon universe. As a diehard Star Wars fan, only chapters four to six count, please. <laughs> this totally makes sense. Keith works in a very old tradition in comics, that of the slice of life cartoon, a tradition that goes back to the dawn of the 20th century. This is a genre that reflects humorous quotidian goings on of friends and family with a touch of autobiography. Keith has injected his own version of the force into this format reinventing it by using this genre of cartooning to comment on politics, social issues, race relations, and his evil twin sisters. <laughs> this melding of his commentary into the Slice of Life cartoon is done with neither a sledgehammer nor a rapier, but with a deft, subtle touch that does indeed, does indeed make you think, which of course is the name of one of his cartoon features. Think, along with Kate Chronicles and a syndicated strip to Nightlife, are the strips upon which Keith has built a career that has seen him win the Harvey Award, numerous Cliff Awards, designated an NAACP history maker, and garnered a prestigious Inkpot Award for his total body of work. This mountain of accomplishments has culminated into a TV series on Hulu called Woke, premiering this coming June. Born outside of Chicago as a diehard lifelong Red Sox and Patriots fan, he moved to San Francisco and gathered a plethora of life experiences that he channeled into his cartoons. He worked in a youth hostel, pumped gas, was a dishwasher, sold leather jackets, and was a Michael Jackson impersonator. And it is on this latter profession which his Kickstarter backers are still waiting for the graphic novel to come out. <laughs> Keith was also in a semi-successful hip-hop band, The Marshall Prophets, which of course found its start with Keith when Keith was haunting his local comic book store in San Francisco. This part of his varied life led to some well-deserved local music success and a torn Achilles tendon. 
Besides his evil twin sisters, pretty much his entire family is found there waiting to his comics, especially his wife Kirsten and his two amazingly <laughs> handsome, though indeed devilishly mischievous, chips off the old block sons, Jules and Jazz. The three of them find themselves appearing pretty regularly in the nightlife, with his dad, mom, uncle, and other, other relatives also appearing in his strips. And yes, all of them still talk to Keith. <laughs> His relatives and the other objects of Keith's cartoon affection found their way into the San Francisco Chronicle, Mad Magazine, Ebony, Medium.com, The Washington Post, and yes, even the Stars and Stripes to show the magic beach reads <coughs> Making a living doing comics in the 21st century is no easy task, with paying print outlets dissolving by the day and websites not wanting to pay much, if at all, Keith's sublime business acumen led him to the college circuit where his humorous yet deadly serious, both figuratively and literally, slideshow on race relations has been received with accolades and applause, along with the occasional controversy, which these days is hard to avoid. Keith. Yeah, leave it to Warren to actually have a longer introduction than a German professor. <laughs> professors have the longest introductions, and you actually <laughs> match them. But I will say this, I don't know if it's a typo, but you said I was born outside the city of Chicago. Oh, I'm sorry, to Boston. Yes, don't oh, say that. Yeah. Come on. Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, want, I want people to roll their eyes. They just think of the Patriots and Tom Brady and roll their eyes at the well, Red Sox. It says Boston there, but I say Chicago, and then follow up with Red Sox. OK, never mind. All right, so I'm going to play psychiatrist. Oh, okay. I'll read it after the show, actually. <laughs> TV show. So, um, why don't we start with, you know, growing up, what did you read? How did your family react to your cartooning? Were there people along the way that kind of helped prod you into the world of cartooning? I mean, how, just, how, how did this entity known as Keith Knight get to where it is? Uh, well, Back in the day when newspapers were newspapers, um, we got the Boston Globe, and the Boston Globe had just a great comic. 